so many Christians don't get that part. They trust God, so to speak. They're looking for God to do things, but they don't know their responsibility to make sure it works together. This is the principle of Newton's law. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. We have to know how this thing works to enjoy the benefits of the kingdom. The pressure and speed of the hot gases provide the force needed to turn the turbines and its shell. You gotta be involved in this process. God wants you to have every promise, but there's a part you play in it. Do something. You know, when I hire people here at the church, I'm looking for dream teamers. People that do something, they serve without a paycheck, they show up on time, they have a passion for what they do, no one knows their name, that's who I wanna hire. People come to me and say, Pastor Gary, I'm called to pastor. Fantastic, what are you doing here at the church? Well, I want a job. Do you have a job available? I thought, Great. What are you doing right now at the church? Well, I'm not doing anything. That's why I came up to talk to you because I'm looking for a job. So you're not on a dream team? No, I'm not on a dream team. You in a small group? No, I'm not in a small group, not leading a small group. So you're not really passionate about pastoring, about serving. You're really passionate about a paycheck. Because if you were passionate about people, you would have already been involved with dream teams and small groups and your gifting would make a way for you. It's really getting interesting in here right now. (laughs) Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 5, slaves, we know we don't have that culture here, so let's change it to today's vernacular. Employees, obey your earthly masters or obey your earthly employers with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but as slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from your heart. What is the will of God? Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not people, because you know that the Lord will reward each one for whatever good they do. What is the will of God in this scripture? Help me out. What is the will of God in the scripture? Serving your employer. So here's how you could look at your job. I am here to serve God as I serve this employer, which means I don't have to have a pat on the back every day from my employer, which means I don't have to be recognized as so-and-so, so-and-so, because I'm not doing it unto the employer, although I want to do it with excellence. I'm doing it unto God, and God will reward me. He will make sure that I am promoted either here or somewhere else. But if I operate in integrity before the Lord and I'm doing it unto the Lord and I'm doing the will of God, as this scripture says, wholeheartedly, I will be promoted. Now, going back to Timothy, if God told, or Paul told Timothy, God's system told Timothy to first test the people, you can be sure that's God's system. That's the system he uses. And you can be sure that Although no one knows your name and you may be in in some insignificant position in your mind, God knows you're there and knows your heart. King David was not always king. He was once a shepherd. And that is a measly position back in Israel's day. But he put his life on the line to fight the bear and the lion over a sheep, something they slaughter and eat. Why wouldn't he just let the bear have the sheep, right? Right? Because he had a trust for his family, that was their wealth in that day, was their livestock. And he risked his life when no one knew his name. When you honor an employer for God's sake, when no one knows your name, and you're in a, quote, insignificant, what many would call a transitional job, you honor God, God knows it. God knows it. He knows your name. He knows where you're at. He created you. He knows, he knows the attitude of your heart. He knows what you think about the job. He, because he's watching to see how you respond to authority. Because he has a big plan for your life. And he knows if you do not respond to authority, authority here, you'll not be able to respond to his authority here. And he has to train you. So how, do God, how does God correct us? How does he train us? Luke chapter 16 tells us how he does it. Verse number one, Jesus told his disciples there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management because what? 
You cannot be manager any longer. Next to your notes, write the word disqualified. Now, which means you have a choice. You can be qualified or disqualified. The choice is yours. This man was disqualified, so inquiring minds want to know what disqualified him. Don't you? You need to know. So the manager, the guy that was being let go, said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. When I lose my job here, people will, uh, see, when I, I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So he called each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 450. What is he doing? He is what? Stealing, right? Stealing. The master, verse 8, commends the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. What does that mean? The master says, basically, oh, so you have the capacity to put a plan in place to further your personal prosperity, your personal plan, your personal life. But you would not take that same creativity and manage my accounts the same way. You were wasting my stuff because it wasn't your stuff. Now, right now, if a shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> I'm just saying, if you have this attitude towards your employer, you need to fess up. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It really is not about my employer. It's all about me. This is, his, this is why he was disqualified. It was all about him. Do you see that? He wasn't putting wholeheartedly himself into the creating of wealth for his master. He was not carrying out the trust that he was given faithfully on behalf of his master. Thus, he was disqualified. Now listen to what God says. This is what Jesus said in verse number 10. Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you've not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? This is key. Write this down. It's always first the natural than the spiritual. The test always happens in the natural, then the spiritual promotion comes. You get it? The test always happens in how you handle earthly responsibilities under earthly authorities before, in, for, before God entrusts you with greater spiritual responsibilities for his kingdom because he's not interested in promoting someone that's disqualified wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly. If you want a promotion, think how your boss would act if you gave your job wholeheartedly, your attention, your performance, your creativity, and you viewed it as if it was your own prosperity and your own money. And you took upon yourself to have the mindset of an owner, not a hireling. Do you know you would stick out like a light bulb on a solid dark night because you would be so different? You would be promoted, guaranteed. God will make sure of it. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 9, verse 8. Do not correct a scoffer lest he hates you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Here is a test. <laughs> When you're corrected or you know someone that's corrected, if they hate the person that corrects them and they're talking negative, just go, scoffer, scoffer. <laughs> <laughs> Definition of scoffer is someone who jeers or mocks or treats something with contempt or ridicules something. They're ridiculing the correction. They're ridiculing that the fact they could possibly be wrong. They're mocking that you, me, something wrong, I made a mistake. No, they're a scoffer. But someone who's wise would actually embrace correction. The Bible says they would love you. Why? Because their heart is to advance. Hey, look, I don't have all together. Tell me what you know. You're obviously someplace I'm not. You've, you know, help me, teach me, mentor me, right? They're going to love you because you took the time to instruct them, mentor them, because they know they need that to get where they want to go. And they're going to love you. In fact, I'm going to give you a homework assignment that goes past that. Your assignment this week is to go to whoever you report to in life, your employer, 
whatever, and ask them. Go up to them and ask them, what can I do to better my service to you? What can I do to help this company? What can I do to personally serve you, to help you do a better job here? But Pastor Gary, you don't understand. I hate my boss. Oh, I didn't ask you that. I said, do it unto the Lord. I mean, if Jesus can die on a cross, you certainly can put up with your boss. <laughs> right? Go to your boss and say, hey, and if you had a wrong attitude, you go and repent. You know, I've had a lousy attitude to this job. I've been talking about you. I mean, well, you got to be careful not saying that, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I'm making a change. I want to serve you. I want to be the best employee you have. I'm going to try my best, but you know, I'll fall short. I want you to promise me, Mr. Employer, will you help me? Will you tell me if I fall short? Will you tell me if I have a bad attitude? Will you tell me what I need to learn to help reach another level of your confidence? What class I can take? What can I do to, to step into a higher place of responsibility? Because I am going to serve you. That would probably about make their day. <laughs> Don't you think? It's like, really? Am I, he's going to say, whoa. She's going to say, oh, that's awesome. Listen, here's the danger. If you train yourself to second guess every leader God puts in your life or second guess every authority on the planet, you're left with nothing because God is the one that put the authorities in place. You don't have to agree with what the president does. You don't have to agree with what the governor does. You don't have to agree with what police officers do or the military does or teachers do or pastors do. But the office they hold should be respected by you. Because if you lose the office, miss, you're kind of getting it blended together. The person is not the office. The off, if you lose the office, you lose all of it. Yes, there's problems. Sure, they're people and they may be doing wrong things, but that doesn't mean you throw the office out the window because the authority is your only hope. It's God's system. It's going over well here today. Great, great. You understand what I'm saying? God is the one that sets, and he will deal with the ones that are wrong. There's, there's systems to deal with that. But the bottom line is we need to understand that we are called of God to honor authorities. And if we don't honor authorities, there's nothing left. Because how we honor physical authorities, our employers, who we report to, is a reflection on how we would respect God. I'm just telling you. The good news is, thank you, wait just a second. <laughs> the, the good news is, there's a great future for you. God is trying to get you someplace, friend. He is not trying. He's not on your case. He loves you. He is trying to get you someplace that is so much bigger than you that, you know, you've got to submit to some training. You've got, he's got a great plan for your life. And if you will submit to him and trust him, even though you don't trust people, trust him to lead you, he will do so. And you will be in a place that, as the Bible says, you will be honored. As your pastor, that's what I want to see in your life. I want to see you have everything God says is yours. I want you to get where God wants you to be, and that would make my job successful.